Welcome to this tutorial on the geotechnical features that are available in the new version of Core Profiler, which is version 2. These features include taking measurements from oriented and non-oriented core, as well as stereo net analysis support and improved logging. To demonstrate the tutorial, I'm going to use the demonstration project that's in the installation folder. I have removed the current log sheets so that we can start with the, the new geotechnical logging sheet that's now available in the new version. To create a new log sheet, go to the log sheet menu and select create. Two log sheets are available, a geotechnical sheet or a geological sheet, and they're based on the ACARP coal log standard. But these sheets are customizable using Excel spreadsheet. For this tutorial, we're going to use a geotechnical log sheet. As you can see, a log sheet has been created at three scales. The core at the top shows the entire length of core. The second core view shows the core at an intermediate scale, which is adjustable through the core scale setting. And the lower one shows the full resolution core. There's a number of tables here that show the different core units and defects that I will describe in, in a moment and there's also a stereo net. The logging allows you to divide the core into core units based on the structural integrity of the rock mass and also to define individual defects on the rock mass. Initially a single core unit is displayed that covers the entire core, in this case 30 meters long and there are no defects. Use the core break tool to divide the core into sections based on the structural integrity. As you can see the core has now been broken into three sections that are shown in the table. It also shows the RQD and the fracture frequency and also the interval length for each core unit. You can calculate the RQD for a section of core by selecting the core unit and then the RQD tool. Initially, there's an information dialog that can be switched off that gives you some information how to use the tool. But selecting different fractures along a section of core and then right clicking will give you the fracture frequency. In this instance, the RQD is now 0% as there's no sections of core greater than 10 centimeters in length. You can also mark defects on the core using the defect tool. As you can see, I've just added two defects that appear in the defects table, including their depth and their position. If the core is not oriented, then only the alpha angle, the angle to core axis, can be calculated. To do this, select the defect and then choose the alpha angle tool. Again, there's an information box that can be switched off once you understand how to use the tool. All you need to do is to choose seven points that's got to go right across the diameter of the core. As you can see, the alpha angle for this defect has been populated in the table at 46 degrees. If you have oriented core, then you can work out both the alpha and the beta angles. Let's work out the alpha angle for this defect. The beta angles computed by defining the reference line to select the beta tool once the defect has been selected. Again there's an information box. And define the reference line direction either up or down hole. Once defined both ends of the reference line the beta angle is calculated and the table is populated and also the dip and dip direction angles are calculated and the pole is plotted onto the stereo net 
by default the hole is assumed to be vertically downwards. The true orientation of the hole can be defined by selecting the collar data and defining the position and azimuth and inclination of the hole at the collar. An indication is given whether the hole is upwards or downwards and by clicking on the hole azimuth or inclination gives you details on how you specify the angle where 0 degrees is vertically downwards, 90 is horizontal and an angle greater than 90 is a hole drilled upwards. I've just added several more defects just to show you the stereo net getting populated and the tables. Once you have a statistically valid number of joints you can actually define some joint sets. This is a useful tool as it shows you the mean pole and the plane for the set and also will highlight the set on the core to find another set. As you can see the two sets have been added to the joint sets table which gives a number of parameters such as the mean dip and standard deviation of the dip and dip direction for the set including the set spacing mean and standard deviation. Selecting the mean pole of the set will display the set across the core in all the views to give you an idea of the orientation of the joints within the drill hole. Another useful feature is the undo tool. If you've made a mistake you can quite easily undo what you've done. or redo it. Selecting a defect will highlight the defect in the table, also highlight the defect on the stereo net and you can select the log sheet entry. As mentioned before this is the ACARP cold standard log sheet but it's easily customizable for your own mine site and the ACARP ones are quite comprehensive as a starting point. This also applies to core rock mass units as well. We're selecting a rock mass unit will show the table and also the log sheet can be accessed and entries defined. Thanks for listening to this tutorial on the geotechnical aspects of Core Profiler. As always, feedback is appreciated on www.csiro.au backslash core profiler if you have any questions.